Hello, soul. How are you doing? In a recent interview, the former NATO commander, Admiral Stavrini, was asked what keeps him up at night. You would have think he said Afghanistan, Libya, Syria, ISIS, Russia. His answer was cyber. Cyber is what keeps him up at night. In the cyber world, we face the greatest differences between the level of threat and the level of preparation. With me today, I have a team that have dedicated all the careers to protect the state of Israel. They are now taking their experience from high-tech technology units, intelligence units, to protect and help other governments, state institutions, and organizations around the world. A truly outstanding team. So, all the way from Israel, the incredible Saigov! I'm bulletproof, nothing to lose. Far away, far away. Ricochet, you take your aim. Far away, far away. One trillion dollars. I want you all to keep that number in mind as we go through the next few minutes. Thank you very much to NET for that warm introduction and thank you to Spark Labs for this amazing event. Really a fascinating and amazing day. I'm Yair Solo, CEO and co-founder of SciGov. Recently I left Visa where I was a senior executive and helped form the innovation hub out in Tel Aviv. And I'm Eli Ben Meir, co-founder of SciGov and CSO a general in the IDF, actually just retired a few months ago after 30 years of service. My former positions, I was uh, the commander of the Intelligence Corps in Israel and uh, was responsible for most of our technological and cyber units in Israel. Also dealt with cyber threat assessment, national threat assessment, and was briefing the prime minister and cabinet on a weekly basis. I want to tell you a little bit of a story about my journey over here. The uh, airport that we left from was Ben Gurion in Tel Aviv, Israel where they did not take off my shoes when I went through security, they did not take away my water bottles, and they did not take away my belt. Now, if we look around the world, just about every single airport in the world today, we see that quite the opposite is happening. And, you know, I'm going to ask Ellie, actually, how could it be, Ellie, that in Israel, where we face the gravest of threats there, yet we see so many few measures when it comes to aviation security in the airport? Well, the answer is pretty simple, but it gives the whole explanation. In Israel, we don't look for the bomb. We look for the bomber. Think about it. Why should you wait for the attacker to come to the terminal when you could go and catch him at home? So in Israel, the security is, is uh, not uh, isolated like an airport, but it's rather like an onion. It's layered, it's holistic, it's an intelligence base. That way, the minute you buy your ticket, we already look after you. Now, I want you all to take that story we just gave you about the airport, but change the word airport with the word cyber. Cyber today, similar to aviation security around the world, is responsive. It's reacting to yesterday's attack. Governments are constantly getting attacked, and they're reacting. They're not being proactive, they're not being holistic, they're not being strategic. In Israel, and us at SciGov, our focus on today's threats and tomorrow's solutions. We see attacks every single day around the world, in the US, Bangladesh, Ukraine, Turkey, and the list goes on and on and on. The number one trillion that I started off with is what fits in right over here now, okay? In 2016, the damage to GDPs around the world will, will surpass one trillion dollars. An astonishing number that just keeps on growing and growing. We see this number going up, and it's not stopping there because the number that we just saw now is just attacks that we're aware of. The attacks that we're not aware of, that we become aware of more and more, are just becoming out now. Now, this problem is not an isolated problem. The problem is actually a global problem. It's affecting every single city, country, state, national entity, private, business, and government entity around the world. So when we found in Gov, this is actually the need we wanted to answer. Technology is important, but today it's siloed and that way it's full of gaps. It's decentralized and not as 
uh, efficient as it could be. This is what we present in SIGOV. We have a method of centralizing and putting everything under a holistic uh, understanding of your threat, current threats, current risks, procedures, and processes, but also a total understanding of your organization, and by, and the, by that way, being able to protect you more efficiently. Our team, the A team, aside of myself, we have some former senior people in the Fortune 50 companies. We have former chief of staff for the Israeli prime minister. The former CTO, our CTO is a former cyber CTO for the Israeli Defense Forces, and some other senior executive from different Israeli security agencies uh, and technological units as well. This enables us to put on the table two main things. One of them is our experience, most of us were involved in our previous positions in the establishment of the Israeli unique national cyber agency. This enables us to bring that experience to the table and share it with countries. Uh, and the other thing is we live in the Israeli cyber atmosphere. We actually are a part of this technology that is popping out of the IDF and other places, cutting edge technology, and most of these companies see us as their front, their front for government. So Ellie mentioned two of the differentiators and the important things that SciGov brings to the table. I'm going to talk about a third, which actually is the most important one. And this fits into what we're doing for governments, which is helping them build their strategy and technology to better protect themselves. We've developed the most advanced holistic cyber assessment tool in the world today. This takes into account multiple disciplines like physical security, human resources, uh, you know, education, legislation, regulation, and of course technology, but it's no longer just technology. People who are focused today on just technology fall behind because everything is connected and there's no longer one strategy from a technological side that can solve your problems. Now, we spoke a lot about the experience, and Ellie mentioned the team here, but the know-how actually is something that I want to focus on because the know-how, and you know, uh, we've heard before um, from a number of the speakers here about um, you know, not being afraid to fail. Hanju spoke about it, um, you know, and really this is something that we saw in Israel um, that not being afraid to fail is very important because we have gone through a process where we have learned okay, from our mistakes and we have gotten to the point where, we're, where we are currently a superpower when it comes to cyber strategy at a national level. And we're, what we're proposing is that SciGov can help governments leap forward and have a much more you know, advanced starting point when it comes to building their national cyber strategy. Now, our vision is to take governments, government-related entities, you know, large corporations, whatever it is, from ad hoc response that we're seeing today to effective strategy, defense strategy, and you know, cyber strategy so that they're able to protect themselves in a proper fashion going forward. The three things that we saw here, there, okay, that, sorry about that, go back. Three things that we saw that from the ad hoc, from our vision is that we are going to help governments and government entities save money and they will also better allocate their resources and most importantly, they are going to now better protect their customers or their citizens. So we're here in Asia. First of all, I want to thank Spark Labs as well as our global investors that have invested in, in us so far. And we are seeking strategic investors, partners, and clients. And we'll be happy to speak to you guys the rest of the day. Thank you very much, and have a great day.